<laughs> Welcome to lesson three on how to build a Raspberry Pi robot step by step. In this lesson, you will learn all about motor control. We're going to play around with a couple different types of chassis. It's going to be tons of fun. First, take a look at this one. This is a great beginner robot chassis that makes a fun device for the kids. I'm connected to the Pi through SSH and executing the Python script. You can use a terminal emulator such as Putty. On the mobile device, I am using Termius to SSH into the Pi. Before we get into the circuit design, let's understand the basic switching action of a transistor. Here we're looking at the BJT, Bipolar Junction Transistor. We have a base, collector, and emitter. For this NPN transistor, when the base is approximately 0.7 volts more positive than the emitter, and when sufficient current is provided into the base, the transistor turns on and goes into saturation. It acts like a closed switch, as you see here. When the base is less than 0.7 volts than the emitter, the transistor is off and acts like an open switch. So in simple terms, if we apply a 3.3 voltage to the base, basically it's on, or the switch is closed. If we have 0 volts, then the electronic switch is open. The PNP transistor operates the opposite way. This is the symbol of a MOSFET transistor. You see three terminals, the gate, the drain, and the source. This is an N-channel and P-channel. When the gate voltage of an N-channel MOSFET is more positive than the source, the MOSFET is on, and there is a closed switch between the drain and the source. When the gate to source voltage is zero, the MOSFET is off, and there is an open switch. In simple terms, if we apply voltage to this gate, it will be on and the switch will be closed. If there is zero volts, the switch will be off. The P channel operates the opposite way. With zero volts of the gate, it's on, and at five volts, it's off. MOSFET transistors are most commonly used in CMOS circuits, which is found in consumer electronics. Just as a fun fact, my RTX 2080 GPU has 13.6 billion MOSFET transistors. <laughs> that is incredible. Now let's talk about the H-Bridge motor driver. Let's suppose we have a motor as shown here. And we're going to connect this across a bridge circuit. And we'll have a switch, S1, another switch, S2, this will be S3, and this will be S4. The connection is H configuration. Here, this will be ground, and here, is the motor voltage. Now if we want this motor to go forward, we need to control the direction of the current. What if we were to close S1 and S4? This will indicate a forward direction in our robot. So S1 will be closed and S4 will be closed where you will have the current flow like this. Now suppose if you want to reverse the direction of this robot, you will want to reverse the direction of the current that's flowing through the H-bridge circuit. And to do that, we will close S2 and S3. So we'll close S2, close S3, then we have current that's flowing in this direction. If we were to close S1 and S2, then we can create a sudden break in the robot, which will stop suddenly. 
Or if we were to do the same thing with S3 and S4. What you do not want to do is close S1 and S3 or S2 or S4 at the same time because that will end up shorting the motor. Right? Do not close S1 and S3 or S2 and S4 because you will end up shorting the motor. Now let's replace those switches with transistors, which are electronic switches. In this example, we'll use the BJT transistors. This is a PNP transistor. This is an NPN transistor. Another PNP. And an NPN. And we're going to connect the bases together where this will be in one from our microcontroller or single board computer, GPIOs, and this will be in two. We'll also add another transistor here to enable the power. And this will be enable one. Let's add diodes across the motor for protection. And this is the basic design of an H-Bridge motor driver. I recommend switching the enable to turn the motor on and off. So when you take a look at this truth table, if you have N1 at a high and N2 at a low, then the robot will move forward. If you have N1 at 0 and N2 at 1, then that will go reverse. If the enable is high, then it will be on. If it's zero, the robot will turn off. The chip we'll be using is the L293D. It is a dual H-bridge motor driver that can supply up to 600 milliamps per motor, peak current at one amp, and up to 36 volts. This chip is ideal for the beginner robotic chassis that you saw earlier. Here's a schematic diagram of the circuit. You have the Raspberry Pi here. This is the L293D motor driver and we have two DC brushed motors and of course the battery. Take note that there's a separate power bank to power the Raspberry Pi. I recommend having two separate power supplies. One to power the motors and two to power the Raspberry Pi in discrete circuits. These are six volt motors and I'm using a battery pack that holds four AA batteries. Through experimentation with both motors under load, the current draw was approximately 300 milliamps. 22 gauge wires are used in the circuit. The L293D can supply 600 milliamps continuous per channel with one amp peak current. This schematic is available in the description below. Now let's take a look at the code. We imported our libraries, rpi.gpio times sys getch, just like what we did in the past couple lessons. Set mode to GPIO BCM. And here is where we're going to define these pins. So for the right motor, we'll have N1 and N2 on pin 5 and 6, respectively, and enable 1 will be on pin 22. The left motor, we have N3 and N4 on pins 24 and 25, respectively, and enable 2 on pin 23. And as for the setup, we're looking at these as output pins. First, we want to have the enable pins as low, so the motor is currently off at the beginning. Now, let's define some functions here. This function is to turn the robot to the right. Okay, in order to do that, we want to have the left motor is on and the right motor is off. So we'll have gpio.output and we'll have enable one gpio.low so that right motor is off okay and now we'll have gpio.output so in 3 dot gpio this will be a high okay 
and gpio.output and for gpio.low. So where you have in three is high, in four is low, it will be going in this four direction. And we have to turn on this motor as well. So we have enable to GPIO is, that's right, you guessed it, high. That will turn the robot to the right. Now let's take a look at the rest of the code that we have written here. So to turn this left, Okay. The left motor must be off and the right motor must be on. So as you can see here, in one and in, in two, okay, we have a high and low, so it's going in a forward direction. The enable one is high, okay, so the motor is on. And enable two is off, okay, so the left motor is off. All right, now we have a definition here to go forward. In that case, we enable one and two, that's high and low, enable three and four, high and low, and both the enables are high, so both motors are on at the same time, it's just going forward. How would you get this to go backwards, you think? Well, you just reverse the in one and in two. So in this case, in one is low, in two is high, okay? And in three is low, in four is high, and of course, both enables are high, so then it both motors are on. I also have an all stop where I put the enables to low. So it turns off the motors. Now we're going to modify the code from the last lesson by using the AWSD keys to control this robot. Within this while true loop, this is an infinite loop, here we have enter key. The key that you press on the keyboard, that character will be stored in enter key using the get function. So if I hit A, then it's going to call the left function. Well, obviously it will turn the robot left. D will be right. W will be forward. And S will be backward. If I hit the Q, that will quit the uh, program. Also, if I hit any other key, it will just stop the motors. Now, again, if I hit the Q, it will quit. It will break out of this loop and call this GPO cleanup. So it just disables all the pins. This code is available in the link in the description below. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. This beast is what I'll be using next. It's the Cytron MDD-10A Dual DC Motor Driver, which can provide 10 amp continuous current with voltages from 5 volts to 30 volts. I'm going to test this circuit by using a more powerful motor. By pressing the buttons, I can test the forward and reverse operation of the motor without writing any code. Since this particular motor is drawing more current than the previous, I'm using 18 gauge wires. I'll be using this type of motor and wheel on a more heavy duty robot project, which I will demo on a future video. This diagram shows the connections on how I tested this 12 volt motor using the Cytron board. The second chassis we'll be using is the Rover 5. We're going to have tons of fun with this one. The motor rating is 7.2 volts, 160 milliamps, no load. Stall current at 2.5 amps. Take a look at the rover schematic. I have two motors connected to the Cytron dual channel board. 22 gauge chassis wiring is sufficient. Let's take a look at the code to control the rover 5 and the Cytron motor driver board. Here we're importing our libraries and I'm using LED to pin 21. I have an LED that's on just to indicate that uh, the power is on. Here, when we're defining our right motor, we have DR1 is equal to 5. That is pin 5 on the Raspberry Pi. A high, it is going forward. If it's low, it's going in reverse. Pulse width modulation 1 is equal to pin 6 here on the Raspberry Pi. I am using software pulse width modulation. And I have it at 0 PWM to turn off the motor and I'm going to have it at maximum duty cycle at 100 to go full speed. You can play around with this to control the speed. Left motor DR2 is to pin 13 and pulse width modulation 2 pin is to pin 19 on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, these are all output pins. 
as well as the LED here. Now, we're going to set up our pulse width modulation pin here, just like what we did in the last lesson. We're using 50 hertz pin, and we're starting at zero here. Now let's take a look at how these functions are written. Now with the right turn, we're going to have the left motor to be going forward and the right motor to be going reverse at the same time. That's how we're going to be turning this. Okay. In order to do that, I have the right motor change duty cycle, 100% duty cycle, so it's on at full speed. And it's going to be in reverse. DR1 is low. And for the left motor, again, that's going to be on full speed. The GPIO output DR2 is high, so it's going to be forward. Okay, do you see how that works? Now for the left turn, it's just the opposite. So the left motor reverses and the right motor goes forward. In this case, full speed at the same time. If I wanted to just go forward in my robot, I just simply have them both DR1 and DR2 high and they're both on at the 100% duty cycle. If I wanted to go backwards, it's quite the opposite. That's right, you just put DR1 and DR2 low. I also have an all stop, which just turns off the motors. The code to control the keys, which is the same as the previous robot. Within this infinite while true, we are using the AWSD keys. Okay, Any other key uh, would stop it and Q will specifically quit the program. Let's try this out. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. You learned how to do motor control using an H-Bridge motor driver. Your assignment is to create your own RC robot. Make a video of it and place a link below. I look forward to seeing your creations. On the next lesson, we'll talk about stepper motors and servo motors. In the future, we'll get into sensors and autonomous robots. I look forward to seeing you next time.